We're back for week three, and we've got another UPA vet in our way, Mr. Dork. Let's take a look at the team matchup. Of course, we're still rocking the same squad. Dork's got a very threatening team though. As you can see, he's got a Sand Core, he's got a couple of Ultra Beasts, he's got a Galarian Zapdos, which does a lot of work to my team. Mega Salamence, just the Flyers in general, wrote him wash off the ground as well. And that Necrozma can be a pain in the butt. And Amoongus, of course, can put everything to sleep. We gotta find a way to work around that. So let's take a look at the squad. Hey, look at that, my cam's in the right place this time. Yay, I'm on the right scene. All right, Groudon. Once again, the first Mon on the team. Double Dance. Looks very scary against him. Doesn't really have much for a Double Dance Groudon. Honestly, the Galarian Zapdos is about all that can take it on, being that Stone Edge is, of course, neutral. But everything else kind of gets destroyed. I ran a few calcs, and once the Rotom is weakened, it's a goner. It's got to be at about 54%, but I think I can make that happen. We got a Lumberry so that we can actually set up on the Rotom, especially if Sun is up, of course, so that we can't get burned. We can just go for a Stone Edge and kill it. I just got to make sure it's at the right percent. We got Earthquake, Stone Edge, Rock Polish, and Swords Dance, rocking Max Attack Jolly with enough speed for the Excadrill out of sand. Next mon on the team is our other ground type. We got Seismitoad. That Dracozolt is looking scary, and I gotta make sure that I can check it some way, somehow. Obviously, the combination of Seismitoad and P2 is gonna be able to allow me to work around it a little bit. Especially attacking is obviously a little bit of a threat, but I'm way more scared of Bolt Beak. So we got Earthquake. Knockoff is really good against his team. Toxic is there, of course, for the Mega Salamence, as I have no other way to touch it when this thing is in. And we've got Stealth Rocks on the set because they do quite a bit of work to things like the Mega Mance, like the Togekiss if it's not running boots, same thing with the Blacephalon, and just chipping away at Pokemon like the Necrozma and the Feromosa and the Galarian Zapdos is going to be really good. Next Mon on the team is of course the aforementioned P2. We got Foul Play, Ice Beam, Recover, and Teleport, and we have a mixed set. So I made sure that this set could take Flamethrower, Specs Flamethrower from Blacephalon, if rocks aren't up. And of course, Ice Beam is there for the Mega Salamence. This is my main Salamence check. It's not gonna knock me out with anything once it's at plus two, so I think we're pretty good to go here. And Ice Beam is pretty much always a one-hit KO with Analytic, and that's why we're running Analytic. Next mod on the set, we got Dragapult, this time with a little less HP, but still a Choice Scarf set, just like last week. We have Dragon Darts, U-Turn, Flamethrower, and Steel Wing, exactly the same set as last week. Steel Wing is just strictly there so that I can hit the Togekiss, Flamethrower is pretty good in the sun. It allows me to hit the Feromosa and the Amoongus at the same time, so there's not really a pivot option there if those two are around, as with some of the last Mons. Infiltrator is going to be really nice for getting through subs. And of course, the speed on here is enough for Excadrill in sand. So Flamethrower is also there for Drill. Now, the set also happens to outspeed Modest Feromosa, which comes into play a little bit in the game, and I'll explain when we get there. Modest Feromosa at plus one, of course. Next up on the team is once again, Jose has suggested that I bring Weavile, so I decided to name it after him as he is the shiny Weavile. We got Knockoff, Triple Axle, Ice Shard, and Low Kick with Heavy Duty Boots this time as opposed to Choice Band. Pretty much the same set, just running Low Kick instead of Poison Jab. Of course, it's gonna hit the Tyranitar and the Excadrill. And we have enough speed on here for the Mega Salamence, just to make sure that I can revenge it if ever it gets a clean kill without getting up a Dragon Dance. This Mon was originally Blaziken, and while Blaziken looks like it can do a lot of work to Dork's team, I think that Weavile ultimately is just stronger at putting pressure on initially. Last one on the team is Celesteela. I'm not sure why I made it shiny, but I decided to make it shiny this week. We've got Air Slash, Heavy Slam, Leech Seed, and Sleep Talk. So I needed to make sure to have something to deal with the Amoongus. However, I didn't want to have to run Safety Goggles. I thought that bringing Sleep Talk on Celesteela was a much better bring, because not much on his team wants to switch into Air Slash, Heavy Slam, or Leech Seed, save Rotom. We've got a max defense set here with 196 HP and 252 in defense. With a relaxed nature, 16 in attack and 44 in spadef, this lets me take a plethora of hits. And the 44 spadef there was to be able to take, I believe, plus one focus blast from Feromosa. Heavy Slam, of course, hits the Tyranitar and the Togekiss the hardest. Of course, I could have gone with Flash Cannon, but Heavy Slam is also really good against the Blacephalon, as well as the Feromosa in case it's a Quiver Dance set. And I don't want to miss Air Slash. So that's the team. 
let's see how it went. All right, and here we are. So Dork decided to bring Tyranitar, but without any of the sand abusers. So I was a little bit perplexed by the team composition. Now I knew Pheromosa and Blacephalon were almost guaranteed against me. I have Sun, I can't outspeed Pheromosa. It's got a really good looking matchup against me. Fighting is quite difficult for my team to switch into. So it made a lot of sense. Rotom also makes sense as it checks Groudon, can put a little bit of pressure on things like Weavile in the lot. Necrozma, I wasn't sure. I didn't see what Necrozma was doing in this matchup with Weavile and, and the Dragapult and whatnot, but as the game goes on, it'll all start to make sense. So let's get right into it. So I decide to lead off with Dragapult against the Rotom, T-Tar comes out on my U-turn, and I do quite a hefty amount of damage, 39% to this T-Tar, so I see that it's not physically defensive. I'm going to bring out my Seismitoad, and I'm going to get up Stealth Rocks, as Dork does the same. I'm going to go for an Earthquake, weaken the T-Tar, and Toxic misses me. So this is pretty big, obviously, my Seismitoad is not going to be Toxic for the whole game, because the T-Tar just missed, and it dies to rocks, and his only hazard removal is Rotom, Pheromosa and Salamence, and I can't see any of them running it on this team. Although Pheromosa could be running Rapid Spin. I'm gonna knock out the Tizar with the following Earthquake, and we're already up six to five. Dork's gonna respond by bringing out Rotom, which again, confused me a little, but I knew Toxic was coming out. I decide to knock off, and as you can see, we knocked off Light Clay. And the second I saw this, I knew I was in for a wild ride. I was looking at the rest of the team and I was like, oh, okay. So now I'm thinking Dragon Dance Salamence, Quiver Dance Pheromosa, Calm Mind Blacephalon, and Autotomize Calm Mind Necrozma probably? Maybe even Weakness Policy. So following turn, I'm gonna get off a of Toxic on the Rotom. My Seismitoad is of course now Toxic because I said it wouldn't be for the rest of the game, but that was a complete lie. Pheromosa is gonna come out and I actually make a good play here into Celesteela. So I had a good feeling that the Rotom wouldn't go for a Volt Switch against my Seismitoad. And I was like, no matter what comes out here, one, it's not going to be Blacephalon. That's for sure. Secondly, anything else that comes through is Celesteela food. I can just Leech Seed it, Air Slash, Heavy Slam, all of that. And the final option, of course, was that Rotom would go for a Volt Switch, but I wasn't too worried about it. So my Celesteela is in now, and the Pheromosa decides to go for a Substitute on this turn. So as soon as I saw Sub, I thought Sub Quiver. It's got to be Sub Quiver. That's, it's the only possibility with screens Rotom, right? So I go for Air Slash, break the sub. Obviously, I'm just going to spam Air Slash here because I don't want this Pheromosa setting up in front of me. Rotom is going to come back out and I'm going to get off an Air Slash and Reflex going down in another turn or so. So I decide to Leech Seed the Rotom and uh, let it die to Toxic plus Leech Seed. I'm going to switch out into Dragapult here knowing that no matter what he does, Toxic, Volt Switch, doesn't really matter. Dragapult is in now. And I'm looking at this. And I see the screens up and I'm like, well, I got Infiltrator, I'm good. So Necrozma is scary, obviously, because of its Prism Armor ability. No matter what I hit it with super effectively, it's pretty much going to bounce off, even with Infiltrator going through the screens. So I'm thinking maybe I should switch into Weavile, or maybe I should go into Seismitoad and try to Toxic it, but it could be Substitute as well. So I weighed all my options and I looked at some Calyx and I knew that if Necrozma had even minimal HP that it'd be able to not be two hit KO'd by Dragon Darts. But I figured this is a dual screens setup team. This has to be fully offensive. So I decided to stay in and go for Dragon Darts. And you'll see that Dragon Darts does 48-ish percent. Rock Polish comes through or Atomized, doesn't matter which one. But I'm still faster because I'm Choice Scarfed. So I'm going to finish this thing off with Dragon Darts. And now it's looking like this is going to be a very swift 6-0 because Dragon Darts is just going to plow through this team. So we're going to see Dork go into Salamence, get off the Intimidate. I'm not staying in on a potential Dragon move. Dragapult is way too good in the late game. I go into P2, which is my check. Roost comes out and I'm going to go for an Ice Beam here as the light screen goes down. Body Slam comes out and paralyzes me. But Ice Beam is going to one-shot the Salamence thanks to the Analytic Boost. Pheromos is going to come in and once again, I start panicking. I'm thinking, okay, if this thing gets up a quiver, it can actually kill my whole team and Weavile's Ice Shard doesn't even revenge it. So this is really bad. If it has any sort of HP, Weavile doesn't even come close to revenging it. So I decided to go into Steela and I remembered something about my prep. I remembered that I had made Dragapult expressly faster than plus one modest Pheromosa. And I also knew that my Celesteela after rocks and leftovers could live plus one timid 
Focus Blast. So if it's modest, Dragapult still outspeeds. And if it's timid, it doesn't kill Steela. All I gotta do is land an Air Slash. Now I could go for Heavy Slam here, but I decide to make my life more complicated and go for Air Slash. So let's see what happens. The Veramosa goes for Triple Axel. So it was physical <laughs> and I had nothing to worry about at any point. Close combat comes out, I'm physically defensive. I'm able to take that quite easily. Air Slash comes out, knocks out the Pheromosa, and I'm only going to let Dork get one kill with this Placephalon. I am gonna go for a uh, Leech Seed, I believe, on this turn, or I think I went for Heavy Slam to make sure I would break a sub. Uh, and then Dragapult comes out, and even if this thing was sub and even speed boosting, it wouldn't matter. Dragon Darts is way too strong. It's gonna knock out the Bless Blacephalon in one hit. And we take the game 5-0. So this was a pretty clean sweep. There's not much to say here. Uh, I think we just really did well. I don't know if Dork thought that dual screens would do anything against an Infiltrator Dragapult or what he was thinking, but it just didn't pan out. Dragon Darts is just too good. Dragapult is too good, man. This, this Mon is now, I believe, in second for kill leads in the league with eight. Uh, it got three this week. Three the first week, I think, and two the second week. So it's it's doing really well. I love this Mon to death. Uh, that's why I picked it up first round. I think people thought that, oh no, he's crazy. Why is he picking up a Dragapult first round in Uber's League? Well, because Dragapult is the best thing that you can get that isn't an Uber, <laughs> in my opinion. So I saved my Uber picks for the last two picks and it worked out. Uh, we're doing great. We're 3-0. and I hope you guys are enjoying these battles. This one was a great one. Really strong showing here from the team. Two Mons didn't even hit the field, being Weavile and Groudon. I really wanted to use Dual Dance Groudon, but I guess we'll save it for a different matchup, a different day. But if you guys are enjoying, of course, make sure to hit subscribe, hit that like button, check out all the socials in the description down below, and just, yeah, generally thank you for watching these videos, guys. I really do appreciate it, and I will catch you guys for week four. See ya.